I'm Felina. And I'm Summer. And you are listening to Broke and Broken. <laughs> because we're both. The podcast about living your best life by getting real. Hello, broken people. Welcome. Uh, Felina here. And uh, of course, Summer. Uh, today we're with one of uh, Summer's friends, Shelby. And I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your last name yet. You'll have to introduce yourself. <laughs> This is Shelby Rose. She's an amazing woman. She does all the things, and she's an artist. You know, we seem to always have artists on here. I think I miss my true calling as a groupie is really what it's about. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, she does a lot of amazing work. I'm going to let you kind of tell. At first, I want you to tell about your beadwork because you just did an art your first art show was that last week or the week before I was recently I did just first do I was included in take a seat at the Halsey gallery at OCU um, a group exhibit of feminist artists and with work of how um, politics affects women Um, so that was pretty amazing I had my first piece Um, in an art show, which was great. I did a beaded portrait of my niece. Um, I use traditional native techniques, but I do pictures of people. So I do beaded portraits, either on the bead loom or through brick stitch. Um, I love it. I've only been doing it since October of last year, but I love it. I said, I just had my first piece um, at a gallery show. And I have another piece that's going to be in a show in Nebraska soon, a piece of wearable bead art. Is this what you're doing? That my friend, you're doing for Mallory? Yes, okay. I'm doing for my friend and fellow artist, Mallory Taylor. Um, she had this beautiful painting called H2O of this beautiful woman um, underneath a water faucet, kind of a symbolic of Mother Earth um, and how precious water is. And so I did a beaded version of that. And then we turned it into a shirt. So she's going to wear a shirt made entirely of beads. I don't even tell people anymore how much time I've spent making this. <laughs> it's so long. It's oh been gosh. ridiculous. No, but it's, it's gorgeous. If I would have known we were talking about, like, I totally would have brought her. Because oh, usually, right. like, I bring her. I spent so much time with her, I don't like to leave her at home unattended. Yeah, so I, I usually bring her, in her with months. me. There's been a lot of work to it since then. You need to see her. She's pretty much done. I've got a couple pieces. You know, she's a little heavy. Right. You there's know, a lot of she's sure. a full figure yeah. girl. So <laughs> there's a lot of beads. <laughs> and there's some things I've noticed I need to reinforce before. But right. she's going to be worn a couple places. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited working on a really special piece um, for Brent Learned. He had this mm-hmm. gorgeous picture of one of his ancestors, um, an Arapaho chief named Scabby Bull. And I've been working on that and beading that for him. Okay. And it's weird, like every piece that I bead kind of has its own energy. Yes. And, um, which you know, you do bead work. And so, yeah, I had to have a conversation with Brent last night. It's like, tell me more about him because it is, um, he has the, the darkest, bleakest, most negative energy of anything Aww. that I've made. And then as Brent was telling me some about, you know, the period of time with, in which he lived and right. everything that happened, I was like, okay, that makes sense. And so I was like, you know, yeah, it's going to take a lot of smudging, a lot, because I find myself so like avoiding that project because yes. I don't like the energy and it was like this is a huge energy drain I don't like this energy yeah. and so I shifted at first we were adversaries um, and I was like my goal was to protect myself against the negative energy uh-huh. but I've thought about it and it's like no I need to just embrace it mm-hmm. and work on healing them so yeah it's where like so last That's night I sat and kind of cried with scabby bull and we Aww. worked a little bit but it's He's the hardest piece. My beads break, the string breaks, the bead tray spills. It's exhausting, exhausting. Uh, but I think it'll be worth it. So that's kind of, that's the hardest thing I've done so far. Certainly not going to be the biggest. How big is this one? This one will be like five and a half by six and a half inches. Okay. So, I mean, a decent sized beaded portrait. Right. Probably about 6,000 beads. Right. But not... Um, little bitty size 11 delicas. Okay. 11 is the small logo. Yeah. <laughs> I little... can't see anything after that point. They're too yeah. <laughs> I've got to have my reading glasses. Um, since I started beading, I have like different size reading glasses. 
a little old lady. My dad even bought me one of those like quilters, magnifying lamps. <laughs> yes. That I use with my loom now to help save my eyes. So but this one, are you looming it or are you? I'm brick stitch. Okay. Brick stitching this one. Um, probably would have been easier if I would have known how difficult he was going to be. Right. Um, Insight and all that. Yeah, and you know, it's like for me. Um, in work and everything I do, like I spend a lot of time mending broken people, broken things. Right. And so with beading, it's a good like meditative state. I'm I'm mending broken glass. And so thinking about that and meditating and mending, and if I would have known that that um, that this person's ancestor was going to be so painful <laughs> to mend, right. I probably would have done the loom because it would have been much faster. Um, and then you're attaching rows of beads instead of every individual bead needing careful attention. But he's wearing me out. You know, <laughs> I have this abusive relationship with my current <laughs> beading project. Um, but it helps you process other things though, right? It does help me process other things. And then on the side, when I get tired of his energy, I'm doing some fun um, hat bands <coughs> and other things for some folks in California oh, that cool. do custom hats so so yeah so that's the more fun and playful but yeah the the passion project right now since I finished Mallory's piece is working with a really cranky old Arapaho <laughs> chief well you know um <laughs> the, <laughs> old native men do tend to be cranky they do tend to be cranky you know and he is a Plains Indian and I'm a Chickasaw <laughs> girl so he may have a little bit of resentment just in that <laughs> that some uppity southeastern matrilineal woman thinks right. that she can <laughs> put him together but we're working on it I'm making friends with him but yeah mm -hmm. I love it that's what I do with most of my free time is a bead. Good. So, uh, I just lost my train of thought. I just like, ran away. Okay, so you had this experiment that's been very popular on your social media, the decolonizing your diet. So, can you start at the beginning with how you researched this? Because that's been the most fascinating thing for people. It's, what? How do you find this stuff out, it seems? So, can you tell us about this uh, experiment so, you've been... So, sure. So, uh, <laughs> Sort of a little over a month ago, uh -huh. because my challenge has ended now, but a little over a month ago, I was just thinking, I thought, you know, and I hadn't been feeling very well, and I've known most of my life that I'm lactose intolerant, but that has never stopped me from eating cheese and ice cream and <laughs> right. all of the yummy all the stuff, good all the good yeah. things. And I'd had a friend visit um, who, who is of lovely Nordic descent. <laughs> and we had all the cheese, all the rich, heavy foods, and she left, and I was just like, I just feel so blah. And I was like, you know, I'd probably feel better if I didn't eat dairy for a little bit. Right. And I had joked with some of my other Native friends, it was like, well, yeah, that's kind of like the curse, like we're all lactose intolerant. And at different times when I felt that way, I thought, well, I'll just make myself some Three Sisters soup and I'll eat it for the weekend and I'll feel better. And I thought, well, instead of just doing that, what if I did 30 days of eating nothing but foods indigenous to the Americas? And at first it started out with the U.S. and it was like, I'm just going to eat foods that my tribe, the Chickasaws, would have eaten. And I was like, I don't have the time for this, <laughs> you know, to try to come up with all of this. I, I'm not friends with a good fisherman that could have like kept me stopped. It's like that would have been the weird Tinder ad. Like, like could you bring, I mean, yeah. I was like, could you please bring me fish? Like this would be weird. Now so, I'm seeing all those profile photos in my head with the guys posing with the fish. Right? It would be the now only I time I would click on one. For. I would be like. Looking for a woman with a fish diet. Pescatarian. <laughs> I was like, could you please bring me some fish? We really need some crappie and some bass. Thank you so much. But, so I expanded it pretty much to foods in the Americas. Mm -hmm. um, so North America, Central America, and some South America, mainly because I couldn't give up my coffee. So That's it's fair. Like, fair enough. It's yeah. like, I'm going to include or South chocolate. America. Does chocolate count? You know, it would totally the dark chocolate, world. but not... I love dark chocolate. Not yeah. the... Usually it has milk and dairy in it for before yeah. you eat it. So, so I can lie to myself. I'm fine. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> so like I did have a few cheats. But yeah, so I got started and I 
It's like, yeah, I'm going to eat indigenous for 30 days, and it'll be great. And I have another friend that she goes, you should put this on social media. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. And now I'm so glad that she did because I wasn't going to. And I thought, why not? I'll put it on there. But, you know, I've had people following it that I never would have thought. People in other countries following it. Has been it hugely it's popular. been it's way more saying. popular than I thought it would be. And in tons of questions. You've gotten a lot of questions. I've gotten a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, so I went through my kitchen. I went online. Like Google is your friend. You know, Google foods indigenous to the Americas. You get a nice little list. And I was like, okay. So I'm gonna go through my kitchen. You know, got up one morning and went through and anything that wasn't. The perishable stuff I threw away. Um, the other stuff I packed away and put in a closet. And then it pretty much cleared out my fridge. I mean, I took a she picture of my fridge and put it on left. there. Like, there was nothing. There were, like, some condiments. <laughs> that was it. Like, a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> so, there was nothing in my fridge. So I went to Sprouts and her stocking up. You know, so squash, beans, corn were the staple foods of the Chickasaw diet. Um, and then fish. So I got... Um, I bought some venison, bought some catfish. What kind of venison? Because venison is um, a category. It's not an actual <laughs> descriptor. Right. I mean, on some so of it going. Get? So I got just what Sprouts had. So, so do they tell the, you what it is? Or is it labeled venison? I've never actually been to a store venison. to try to buy this. I was this. surprised. Like before, I've only gotten venison from people that actually like shot and killed a deer. Right. And right. brought me the meat from it. So... I was kind of impressed. I was like, oh, they have this at the store? So what I didn't know didn't hurt me. I was like, okay, okay. this counts. So we assume it's deer? And that we ass- I assume it's a deer, okay. some sort of deer-like animal. Deer-like. You know, it could have been you know. elk, could have been <laughs> moose. You just short array here. I, <laughs> I don't really know what I ate. Fair it enough. just said just venison. <laughs> Probably would have been better if I knew, but... Well, it's hard when you have to buy commercially. Right. You don't really know what you're getting. So I did make, just for convenience factor, because I really wanted to do this, but then I didn't... Certain things were just a little difficult. Mm-hmm. So one exception I made, and it was mainly because a staple dish um, in a Chickasaw diet is pashofa. Mm-hmm. Or Tanchi, tanchi Lab- Labona. Labona, if you're Choctaws and you mm-hmm. say it wrong. Can but you? we call <laughs> We call it Pashofa. Can you and tell me what that is for yes. those of us who don't yes, know? Yes, for those who don't know, we're jokes. So, Tanchi Labona. Which just is, means corn soup. Yeah, Tanchi is corn. Okay. It's corn soup. It is cracked pearl corn, kind of like hominy, mm-hmm. um, and pork. Okay. And that's it. And okay. you cook it. Sounds like menudo. Yes. <laughs> it's very yeah, okay. much. That. Yeah, I think that matter I'll, of fact, I go buy the corn at the Mexican market. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of tribes, you know, it was a staple dish, and we had pork in it. And so I started looking. It's like so clearly I can eat pork, and I was like, no, pigs aren't indigenous, <laughs> right? Pigs and rabbits, to the US. which we are staples in almost and everything. So we serve. I was like, you know, I made an exception for pork because um, the Chickasaw's first encounter <laughs> with European colonists, settlers, explorers, invaders. invaders, whatever you want to call them. I think these were this flavor of <laughs> invaders were conquistadors. Yes. Um, De, it was yeah. DeSoto. <laughs> DeSoto and his men came and they were going up the Mississippi River and they had stayed with the Chickasaw for a certain amount of time and they were getting ready to leave. And they were like, oh, well, we're going to take 200 of your men for servants, and we're going to take <laughs> yeah, some you of your mind, women right? <laughs> to entertain the troops, you know? And they were like, oh, that's that's great. And so that night when they went to bed, the Chickasaw rolled in, and we slaughtered them. And so DeSoto and the few men who survived, DeSoto was mortally wounded, and they limped their way up the Mississippi River, and he died further upstream. So when they went back, so I know that we kept all of the things, all of their rations, everything they brought. And so I decided that for me, that pork was going to be my spoils of war. 
And, you it know, like I decided bacon. that, yeah, it's like victory tastes like bacon. <laughs> yes. And it's fabulous. I was like, I will happily eat pork on my indigenous diet. So that Fair was enough. my one big cheat. And then, um, and it's a cheap protein. Yep. We'll yeah. say that we can get into cost. <laughs> we'll it. Pork right. is a cheap protein. Yes. And so stayed with that. And then my other cheat was, you know, we ate a lot of waterfowl and turkeys. And I didn't have time to go around looking for duck eggs, goose eggs, pheasant eggs. Too, so I just that, ate yeah. chicken eggs. Yeah. It's like I I know, and I know it's I had close enough. Right? I had a few people question me, and I was like, this diet is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> like I am not a <laughs> real historian. <laughs> because some people, you know, were really. I was like, I totally realize I'm making up the rules as I go along. That's fair. But I'm gonna try to stick with this. So. I did, and I didn't realize, I think, when I first committed to it, because it sounded like such a fabulous idea, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know going into it that that meant giving up all wheat products, all dairy, all beef and chicken. (laughs) Everything you normally eat. Everything I normally eat, I didn't eat. Um, But you know what? Like, I felt great. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed within the first week, the first, like, tangible thing was my saliva change. Like, my spit change texture. It's like, you know, you go, you brush your teeth, and you go to lick your teeth, going, like, my mouth feels different. And so I looked up, and dairy thickens your mucus and saliva. And so does gluten. Gluten gluten thickens. And so I was like, so if I'm not eating wheat or dairy... That would under <laughs> that right. would okay. explain why my saliva changed. Interesting. But so that was like the big obvious different, and I did think I'd been like the best diet hack because eat, I could follow my diet and eat my weight in chips and salsa. Yeah. Because um, corn this chips. This is the diet I need. I mean, <laughs> I mean chips and salsa and guacamole. Like I love you can eat all of that I love all salsa. Those also, so I can eat that all day. It was great. Um, yeah, I could keep. Talking. Do you have a specific question? So uh, like, I don't know. You can. I'm still thinking about your your breakfast this morning because I saw the pictures. So yeah, um. yeah. My I made um, pashofa. Uh, there's a recipe. Um, that I made a crock pot recipe. I didn't own a crock pot, so I lived by myself. So I bought a crock pot so I could make fashofa. <laughs> should have hollered. I have four of them. I should have hollered. <laughs> but I bought one. As they was, I, I bought a fry daddy so I could make okay. fry bread because I was getting tired of, like, trying to pan. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy a fry daddy. <laughs> so I have my fry, be- fry bread fry but daddy. you can have fry bread on your diet. I, no, I could not have fry bread on my diet. Um, <laughs> so no, I didn't no eat. No wheat flour. No wheat flour. Um, but yeah, but I felt, I don't know if I lost weight, but that really wasn't my goal Mm -hmm. to lose weight. It was just to feel better, which I did. Did you? I did feel better. So have you gone back to? So it ended, I did notice this month when I went, or this week when I went to the grocery store, Mm -hmm. I still bought only foods indigenous. You know, I could buy anything I wanted, but I really liked the food. And I have gone back. My body really liked that. Like, I may have to really think about if I'm going to bring dairy back to my diet. Because, like, yesterday I had a submarine sandwich, you know, with the bread and cheese and all of the good things. And I could just instantly feel my sinus cavities tightening and swelling. Like, I could just, it was like, oh, yeah. Mm, Maybe I shouldn't do this. So, I don't know. But, yeah, now it's like I'm fresh off of it. It's just been a couple days. So, Uh certain things. I was traveling, and I had, like, this yeast roll Mm -hmm. with a lot of homemade butter on it, and it tasted so good. (laughs) After not, it's like, I know that this is an average roll, but this tastes like heaven because I have not had bread. I understand. I I eat keto. And so, occasionally, I will sneak a piece of bread or something. I'm just like, oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, so my problem it was, is I have no self control. So once mm-hmm. I get one thing, then I'm just mm-hmm. like fall off the cliff. I, I just reset every day. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, today is just going to be a day where I do what I want. And then tomorrow I'll reset. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, if I'm, I could get back to it, it'd be great. I, I just don't. I, I, I can't adult well enough to make myself do it. To be indulgent. I mean, I made it through with nuts and berries, um, snacking uh-huh. on nuts and berries. One thing, like, there's so many, like, all the blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. Um, there were grapes, plums, not peaches or apricots, but plums. And so lots of fruit. And then. What about acorns? Can you do acorns? If I wanted to. You could do acorn flour. You can do a lot with acorn flour. I could. I didn't. <laughs> I just wonder. I didn't. If that was, I haven't researched if that was indigenous I, to here or if that came later. You know, and so like I could have shrimp and grits and stuff because I like, I shrimp. like shrimp. And it's like, this is a golf, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I like grits, like savory grits. And I could make without the cheese in them. You know, I usually have cheddar grits, but it's like I can leave the cheese out. So I could do that, mm-hmm. but I did end up for breakfast. I found like my new favorite breakfast that I never would have had if I wouldn't have done this uh-huh. is butternut squash that you can buy already cubed mm-hmm. and just put some maple syrup and nuts, either walnuts or pecans, heat it in the microwave for three minutes. Hmm. It's really tasty. Wow. Um, sounds pretty good. It, yeah, it's just kind yeah. of, it's hard enough that it feels substantial like you're eating a bowl of oatmeal or something, but that texture, or like eating a sweet potato with that, but it cooks up super fast. Hmm. But yeah, definitely buy it already cubed up because butternut squash. I usually grill mine. So I don't got the time for that. Out. It's so I don't got the time for that. Oh. <laughs> I usually grill mine, so. Oh, well, you can grow your own. I know I felt so sorry. My mom, she had bought one, and my mom doesn't like to cook, but she had seen the pictures online. Oh. She was like, I bought it. How do I prepare it? And I was like, I just open the package and pour right. some in a bowl. Like, I don't buy the whole squash. It takes too long. I like to cheat and just cut it in half and just, like, scoop it out. I'm not peeling that. It's too much work. <laughs> yeah, that was how I advised for her to do it. I was like, just peel it out, bake it like that, and then put your nuts and syrup on it afterwards. Don't worry about taking off the peel and cubing it and all that. Yeah, that's so. hard. It is. I usually make yeah. a soup out of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used to do with it, with some cream and good stuff, but not anymore. Mine usually has peppers in it because I put peppers in everything. <laughs> yeah, I put jalapenos in everything. I might eat lots of Mexican food. Well, that's about the kind um, anyway. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did have Thai food the other night. You know, after it ended, I'm back to eating food from all over the world. And I, like, wanted to lick the bowl. <laughs> I was like, the curry sauce was it's so good. Month. I have not <laughs> had these flavors. <laughs> um, it was really good. But, like, I am noticing. I don't think I've ever, one, I've never been on a diet that long because I'm horrible at self-discipline. I understand. I don't do anything that involves self-deprivation. That's just, I am not a fan of self-deprivation on any level. <laughs> and... um so yeah, but I'm noticing now like when I eat the other stuff, like I just feel better if I eat and it's just a little thing of being mindful. I think for me it was more of like a mental challenge mm-hmm. because if I would have told myself it was a legit diet, I never would have done it. <laughs> Wouldn't have made it. <laughs> no. But it's like, okay, like can I do this? And yeah, the foods were great. Um, if I didn't meal prep, it really sucked because... It's like if you're busy, I had a busy couple of days at work and I'd been out of town, so I didn't have time to prep. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like starving and going from meeting to meeting and like going through Taco Bueno drive through I'm like, can I just have some refried beans and chips? No cheese, no nothing, right. no tortilla. Like, just give me some beans and chips. Um, so I was pretty grumpy about <laughs> it then. But yeah, if I meal prepped, yeah, I made like bison chili and venison chili. Like each me- week I'd make a big pot of either Three Sisters soup or chili or really both. And then I would just take it to work in jars. Oh, what's Three then, Sisters soup? So three, I'm sure lots of people make it different ways. Um, I make, I make a turkey stock, um, which you can buy like a turkey neck or turkey thighs or something it's about instead of a whole turkey because I live by myself so it's one like cooking small enough for one person and then just cook that and then take whatever meat's off of it and chop it up fine and use the broth mm-hmm. and then I like peppers and everything mm-hmm. so I put onions and bell pepper and jalapeno mm-hmm. and cook it and then add the broth back and then it's corn squash and beans 
So sometimes I use fresh corn that I cut off the cob, sometimes just frozen in a bag, either yellow squash or zucchini, um, usually some fresh green beans, and then sometimes add kidney beans or pinto beans also. But with the turkey, depending on how much meat I have from the turkey, sometimes I didn't add the other beans. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah, simple, so it's just a delicious. simple soup. Yeah. It's just a vegetable soup. Um, so I'd make that, or then I'd make chili. So and eat that, and then put lots. I'd have corn chips instead of crackers. I mm -hmm. could eat corn chips, and then corn tortillas. But yeah, so I made it a whole month, and yeah, it was really interesting because I did have people in England yes. <laughs> or Ireland and other places asking me what is happening out there we are at sauce in yes. Oklahoma City so we've got some uh, we're in a <laughs> private room very far away from some very loud action going on yes, so. apparently there's a lot of fun <laughs> stuff happening I bet, sauce. <laughs> I'm betting it's a sporting event uh, probably. I am it is not really sporty so <laughs> I wouldn't be the one to ask, but I bet somebody wearing some tight pants made some sort of score <laughs> where they ran across a line with a ball. Well, my guess. Good for them. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. sports ball <laughs> thing happened. The so. president of the sports thingy <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ran with his tight pants and his ball across a yellow line. Or maybe it was white. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, please ignore the, the noise in the background. <laughs> I'm distracted now. I'm sorry. I'm too ADD for life. <laughs> You're like, what is that? <laughs> Where were we? What were we talking about? Well, we've talked okay. about uh, the diet and beating. What else is there to know about you? Uh, all kinds of things to know about me. One thing, like it did take me the whole month to figure out how to do it inexpensively. Right. That's always a hurdle, right? Because my first week it was... You know, it's like, okay, this should not be this expensive. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm just feeding one person. I think the first week, of course, I had to buy everything because I had thrown out everything from <laughs> everything my friend. you owned. <laughs> everything I owned was gone. Um, but, yeah, so to feed one person, to buy groceries for one person, $100 a week seems a little excessive. And then I got it down to 75 Then I got it down to 60 Oh, that's good. And then last week, my goal was to get it at $50 or less. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, so my son, you know, was like, well, why are you buying beans in a can? You know, you can buy them in a bag and soak them. You know, my 26-year-old son that thinks he's 50. Um, <laughs> and I was like, you're right. I should probably buy my beans in a bag and soak them uh -huh. instead of soak buying the canned overnight. beans. Yeah. So I started doing that. But little things. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, like, being mindful. Because that was the one thing I was disappointed in. Mm -hmm. was, like, it shouldn't be, like, for snacks. I remember when I forgot snacks. And I went to the grocery store by my work and bought a little bag of nuts and a thing of blackberries. Like, I'm spending eight bucks, nine bucks. Wow. And I'm like, this is too expensive. Like, it shouldn't be this expensive to eat in Just because I run out of money. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, being mindful, I think that really was the only downside. I mean, I justified it in that I wasn't eat, going out to eat mm -hmm. that much. But I don't know. Like, I think I could do it cheaper now. But at first, I mean, I will admit I was spending way too much money. Like, it wasn't a cheap experiment at the beginning. Um, for feeding one person, it shouldn't right. cost that much. So that learning um, curve. The learning curve of just getting smarter, and I just stopped buying fish because it was too expensive. I'd sort of feel like I would get salmon and catfish or salmon and shrimp. Should I hit up those those two I need it. I really need it for those. I should have like found like one like yeah. I just want your fish. Like you know what? That's gonna be the weirdest. You know what would be super hot? You're gonna get a just lot show. of people swiping right for the wrong reasons. Right? Just show up. <laughs> she should with make your a fish whole podcast about the responses she gets. Yeah, <laughs> that up. Do another experiment. Let us know. We'll we'll track your progress on that. that would be amazing. <laughs> Going on Tinder and saying I yes. just want you for your. I think that this would not end <laughs> well for me. Or maybe it would end really well. <laughs> maybe it say. might end super well. Right. Oh Are you still on Tinder? I'm not. I'm not either. Are I'm not, not either. I, I took a break from men. I will do like two weeks hiatus. on and three months off well, and two weeks on and three months off. I am yeah. not. Well, I'm not taking a break from men, but I have not been on Tinder in months. But I took, I like, you know how you can pull your card? Mm -hmm. But I didn't bother to find out how to deactivate my 
my profile. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, took it off out of the deck. So yesterday while I was deleting emails, I just usually delete the ones from Tinder, so I don't even know what they say, but I was in my email box when it came in, so I saw the preview. I got a message from that guy, do you remember from months ago, I told that story about the dude who ripped my hair out? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that story's on the first, uh, on episode one. I went on this, twi the, this Twitter, Twitter, Tinder. I'm getting the wrong app now. Tinder date with this guy, and we'd been talking for a couple months. This was a long time ago. And, you know, he seemed normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they seemed always like, they do. They always do, right? Yeah. So we meet, and, he, and we sat there, and we had a conversation for a long time, and everything seemed fine, and all of this. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. When I went, when, then we went to have sex, and that's when things got weird. Because <laughs> every good story starts out that way, right? <laughs> and anyhow, he ended up ripping my hair out, and he was very strange and did not want normal things. And I spent the last several minutes crying until he finally let me leave. It was a big mess. <laughs> you oh, can wow. hear a little story on episode one. I don't want to retell it. But, <laughs> yeah. So that was months and months ago. And he messaged you. He, has me he had texted me a few times over the several months after that because I remember getting one on Mother's Day which was in May which had been months since I had met him and I blocked him from my phone and I pulled my account from Twitter Tinder <laughs> dear god I can't even get the right social <laughs> right. media app yes yeah. you know all those things and so yeah he sent me a message yesterday he really doesn't get it does he apparently not apparently he thinks this was entirely normal and my not mm -hmm. responding for months and months and months apparently means nothing it's an invitation for him to just keep trying harder apparently like, that's not an invitation just for <laughs> you guys out there who are unaware if a girl doesn't return any of your calls and you can no longer see that your text messages mm -hmm. are being delivered means she blocked you right it means stop trying it's not an invitation. And I feel like, do, do you remember <laughs> that scene in Thelma and Louise where she's like, in, <laughs> for future reference, when a girl's crying like that, she's not having fun? Like, seriously, you should have got the hand at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I uh, Tinder dated rapidly, <laughs> rapid, rapid Tinder dating. Uh, yes, I did that for a few months. Shortly after I broke up with my sociopathic yeah. ex as you can hear in about in my episode yes um <laughs> but uh then after uh reaffirming that i am the awesome attractive female that i knew i was i was like okay i'm done right i need a break <laughs> that's how i was it was the, the, i was there for the quick spiral and then i'm like okay I okay yeah. i need to do those. now i'm just exhausted time. and i don't feel like being anybody's mom which is really that's what it really date. seems yeah. to end up, I don't have the emotional capacity or the energy or the time to want to take care of you. Um, if you'd like, I don't, and I don't need anybody to take care of me. Right. You know, if, be you know someone who wants to have an actual partnership. Sure, maybe, but I don't really know if there Does that are exist? men out there. And I'm sorry. Please feel oh. free to challenge my uh, <laughs> hypothesis. Um, maybe there is someone who knows how to be a real partner, but I, don't know. I mean, every time I get into a relationship, I just have to mother them, and I'm just tired of that. I yeah, I do just don't want to do that. It's anymore. not fun, and I'm, no, I know I haven't been in a real relationship in eight years, and I was talking to one of my good friends that I've known since we were kids, and we were talking about different things. You know, those deep conversations. What makes you happy? What do you want? And I was like, well, I'm pretty happy right now. Like, I I feel pretty good. And I was like, you know, maybe I'd want someone. You know, to share my life with, and she looks. She goes, really? And I said, <laughs> well, wait. I probably wouldn't be able to be like they'd be really annoyed that I have bead projects right. all over the house, and then I travel for work, and I've got some great friends. And I was like, no, no, I don't think I do want a boyfriend because right. that seems like a lot more work than I wanted. I mean, I'm sure I'm. The, if I do fall in love, I swoon and I'm all about it. It's really embarrassing and obnoxious. <laughs> I'm the same but way. But I just romantic. haven't done, like, at this point, I'm going, no, like, the things I have going on in my life, mm -hmm. like, unless you can be totally cool, and so, like, I joke with my kids, because I was like, you know, I like really, you know, independent, driven men mm -hmm. that kind of have their own thing going Talks on, and head. they have confidence. <laughs> Independent-driven women, you hear of a lot. Right. Independent-driven men. 
I like, you know, know independent, driven <laughs> men. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's what I like. They're not looking for full time women either because they have the same problem we do. Right, because yeah. they're they're dealing with people, and so yeah, my son goes, oh, so your type is arrogant, aloof assholes. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like on a yes, good day, yes, they're is. confident, independent, driven. But yes, on a bad day, yeah. I am really drawn to arrogant, aloof assholes that also have really busy lives, like I do. So maybe I'm the arrogant, aloof <laughs> asshole. <laughs> maybe that's what it is, but. Yeah, it's like if you're not really busy with your own life, like I don't want all right. of my girlfriends are uh, really busy yeah, with their lives. Have yeah. stuff. Like have your own stuff. Have yeah. your own life. I don't need you from my business so, all the time. Like we can no. maybe cross paths in one aspect of life and certainly the bedroom. But like <laughs> right, exactly. Outside of that, like do your thing, let me do my thing. And I, right. I can't Meet take back it at the when port. they right when yeah. they're like oh they want you to cancel this or don't oh, be so busy no. to, you know because I want time no yeah that's no. not how this works that's why I like guys who yeah. have their own shit going because yeah. they get it I'm like I, you go do your thing I'm not gonna interfere mm -hmm. as long as I get the same because I'm not right you don't get to interfere in mine exactly because I'm trying to do shit here exactly yeah 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 and so yeah a guy confident enough to deal with that and so it's just easier yeah to not. So I yeah. just beat. I spend all my free time beating. Yeah. I thought you said be, which yeah. is also kind of. I just true. be. Yeah. yeah. I just be me. Yeah. She and be. You she, be and you she be. She be with her beads. Yeah. <laughs> I be me. <laughs> I be. Yeah. I talked to a friend the other day. She's like 55 or something, and we were having this conversation because she's the same way. Because she's like, when I was raising my kids, it was that you know just like you. I didn't want a man in my house all the time. It causes problems, and I'm doing you know she owned a business, and she's like, I'm doing all that, and she said, now my kids are grown which your kids are grown too she said now I don't want somebody I have to answer to who you know I have to consider in all my decision making she said I don't think I'll ever have a man in my house ever again I have three grown sons uh -huh. and I've been married three times uh -huh. um, so Did I feel like I paid my dues <laughs> and yeah now I'm like I don't even own a pet now I killed, I had someone gave me some air plants a year ago and I like officially declared them dead. Like I live in my, I killed air plants. How it's that bad. That? It's a new thing. I don't, you literally just need air. That takes real did talent. You, did you water them? Is that what happened? You overwatered them? Well, like you're supposed to water them periodically. You didn't. Not often enough, okay, apparently. Enough. Okay. Apparently, not often enough. Well, they don't tell me that they need anything, so I just you leave them in the you. windowsill. Um, but yeah, so now it's like I don't have to mess with anybody's shit but mine. Literally and figuratively is speaking. Is that amazing? It is so amazing. <laughs> I like, will get there somewhere. I'm counting down the years, like the youngest is six. I'm like, oh God. Oh, I'm gonna you be still have. Why did I start over? <laughs> I know my my yeah, most recent ex like really wanted kids, and and I, I was like, it. well, a you're a sociopath and we'll fuck up our children, so no. <laughs> but yeah. uh, b like my daughter's nine, and I'm like, I'm halfway done. Mm -hmm. Like, do I really want to start over again and have another 18 years? Because right now, by the time she's out of the house, I'll be 45. I mean, that's young. Like, I'll, you know. See, that's how I was going to be. I was going to be in my 40s. I'm going to be 50 now before I have no minor children. I'm not starting over. If a yeah. man wants kids, I'm like, well, you might could be with me, but you're going to have to have kids with somebody else. And I'm not babysitting. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not, not into it. I'm, I'm like, done. my daughter really wants a dog. And I'm like, I don't really want to. I just don't want to pick up poop. Like, I'm done with the shit. shit. And you I'm can't done with take the shit. off for a few days. Without... I have a cat. Cats are like, Cats you can are like me. They're independent. They clean themselves. They poop in a box. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. But, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you do, no judgment. That's your business. <laughs> At least it's in one place, and I only have to clean out her litter box about, you know, once a week and, you know, and get away with it. But I just am not into taking care of somebody else. I, I've not had enough time. I've been doing I've it. I've given so life. much I'm of done. myself. Yeah. You've given so much of yourself. I'm done. Caring like, for yeah. others. It's time. And it's and, it, and I hate that there's, like, a stigma that that's selfish. It's not. It's self-care. And it's being your best version of yourself and being able to offer your beadwork and things like that that are a creative contribution to society and that really does matter. So it's not selfish. Why don't people value that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, do and usually my life gets better mm -hmm. when I spend time taking care of myself. Yes. It would be total chaos because I'm trying to please everyone else and when I say fuck you, I'm going to please me, things always fall back into place. So. 
Yeah, I don't know why we do that. I don't know. I, I don't think know. we're conditioned to as women to, uh, you and know, anything focused on us. Yeah. yeah, and, and anything and that's focused on you feels selfish. selfish. Like even yeah. like different than one. Like I live by myself. Like I don't have to take other people's. Right. thoughts and needs into consideration but you still feel selfish like I still feel selfish and go oh I'm not like this is just that season of life that I'm in mm -hmm. and yeah. so finding things that make me excited you know I think like a lot of people it took a little bit for me to learn to be my own activity director <laughs> you know, fine, because you're used to like everything I do revolves around taking kids here taking right. kids there mm -hmm. making hus you know making meals for husband doing things to make other people feel special nurturing other people's dreams mm -hmm. Yeah, now I get to know. nurture my dreams, yeah. and it's and it's really just nice. as important as anybody else's. They are, and to finally be as protective of my dreams mm -hmm. as I have been for other people, yeah. you know, helping other people accomplish their goals and dreams. So like these are mine, and I'm gonna support them, and, and you know, and with no reason not to. And you recruit much better friends. <laughs> I know, like when you take good care of yourself. You, you find other friends that like being friends with healthy people. Mm -hmm. And the people that don't know how to do that kind of fall away. That's yeah, true. I've that lost a lot of people in the last, very, well, since we've known each other the last few years. Because, you know, my life's changed man, a lot over that, that time. And, yeah, I've lost a lot. That statement could not be more true <laughs> in my life than it happened in the last, like, four months really like that's, her entire life yeah. has changed this year yeah it's been insanity <laughs> so I hear exactly what you're saying uh, but yeah I mean self-care is not selfish you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of anybody else so I mean I'm a, I have a nine-year-old and so I feel selfish sometimes when I like I play in a band and we go out and I play music or whatever but that is good for me and she sees me doing that and knows that she can do more than one thing with her life she doesn't have to just grow up and be you know, not to say that there's anything wrong with anybody who's a mom, but like, obviously, but you know, she can be a mother, she can be a lawyer, she can be there a options. vet, she can be an artist, she can be many things, you know, and uh, you know, I, I don't, I used to feel really guilty about, you know, sending her to dad so I could go out to the bar and play a show, but that's not a selfish thing, that's something that's really good for my soul, it makes me a better mother, too, so taking care of yourself first makes you be able to take care of others. And that gives her permission to do that when she gets older. Yes. yes. That yes. she can see, I can take care of myself. Yeah, so I can do these things that are important. for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I certainly grew up with a mom, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my mom was very much a people pleaser. And it was all about whatever she could do for everybody else. And she saved no energy for herself and ultimately passed away uh, as an extension of that because she was self-medicating she would not do healthy things to take care of herself so that there was anything left uh, to give. There was nothing left. You know, she gave it all out and nothing left for herself. So, anyway, I don't know. That's I think my it's, fear I mean, of I, doing that. Because yeah. I do. I overextend myself and I like, can't say no to people. <laughs> yeah, but the projects you do are also creative endeavors. Some and, of them, and then some of them are work. Mm -hmm. And I still have trouble saying no to work. So, mm -hmm. I this week, I this past week, we're on a Sunday now, but this past week, I set a I let everybody know I'm taking, I will be set, setting time that I am unavailable. Clients cannot call me. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to check your text messages. I'm going to delete them. Boundaries. Yes. Setting and boundaries. I'm going to start taking one weekend a month off from work. Creative projects only. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people are not going to be happy about this. <laughs> we'll see. This next weekend is going to be the first weekend I do it. So we'll see how this goes. I'm sure people <laughs> are going to be happy. Email me and I will check it next week. But I will not answer your phone calls, and I will delete your text message without reading it. So we'll see how well, well people respect the boundaries. <laughs> I think that's so healthy. I mean, I've recently been learning to, to set boundaries. And it's hard. It, well, it's just, it, I have become so conditioned to not setting boundaries mm -hmm. that I didn't even realize that people were violating the, the boundaries I was trying to set. Yes. Like, I, I get so uncomfortable with confrontation and negative energy that if there was even the hint that setting a boundary myself was going to prompt a negative reaction mm -hmm. out of the other person I just wouldn't set it and I would allow them to steamroll me mm -hmm. because I didn't want to deal with their negative response their negative emotional response to me just mm -hmm. trying to set boundaries to protect myself and that has been a revelation that I've had in the last just few months yeah, so that you don't have to sacrifice yourself to protect yourself yeah. but yeah that default of 
Yeah. I can sacrifice myself mm -hmm. to save this situation, mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. this relationship. Mm -hmm. And realize, like, oh, wait, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, or I can just say, I don't need this relationship. It's yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. I'll be fine without it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really hard It's a for new me. thing for me. Me too. I think when you grow up not learning how to set boundaries, it's really hard to learn when you're an adult. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or it's or, hard for me. I'm <laughs> having some trouble. And when you see people, when the, you're parents don't set boundaries themselves and you you know you don't see them you know do what you need to do they don't set the example sure. so mm -hmm. I don't know it's just boundaries are important it's an interesting topic too uh, especially for women I think just learning how to set boundaries and take time for yourself you know that's and this what is where my therapist has a job because she has to teach me how to do it <laughs> Yes, yeah, and I've worked with therapists in the past of setting boundaries, mm -hmm. and now I did go back. Like last year, I went to the therapist, and one thing is like I think now my boundaries are too high. <laughs> you know, I went from like you expect you know letting people run all over me and thinking uh -huh. like oh no, let me do this and take care of everyone else. And then now I've set other boundaries, and so different times I were like no, like now I feel like I've like Rapunzeled myself. You know, like I've put myself up in a tower. <laughs> My no no, mm -hmm. like no one gets to, <laughs> no one gets to harm the girl in the tower, right. and so set up too many boundaries for people to get very close. Mm -hmm. But yeah, being really protective over who, who really matters. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of being really selective. Yeah, and the people who do really matter, really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, like knowing that handful of people of hey, for these people, I will drop everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I've got one friend in New York. I lived in New York for a couple of years, and she got married. And I used, I had, like, you know, a voucher for a flight. So mm -hmm. I used that, and I stayed with friends. But it's like, yes, I will drop everything and take time off work so I can go and be there for your wedding. Mm -hmm. Because you really matter. There's a lot of people that I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm knowing, like, these few people, I would... And then giving myself permission, like, I'm not going to do that for everyone, for everyone because yeah. not everyone deserves that. Mm -hmm. um, they want that for me. Right. And not everyone deserves that. And giving yourself permission, like, you get to pick and choose who you invest your time and energy in. And once you figure that out, then it's really empowering. Yeah. Um, and then going, oh, like, this is my choice to have you in my life, and I can change my mind on that anytime I want. Yeah. Um, yeah, but being like for the people who are, but if you do that, it really frees up times for those people that you do really care. Because if you mm -hmm. spend all mm -hmm. your time bending your boundaries for everyone, you end up shortchanging the people you really care about. Yep. Not mm -hmm. only that's yourself. True. So maybe that's the way of tricking yourself <laughs> to having good boundaries. Work. I can use that. It's like that you can help the people you love so much better if you're really selective. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a therapist once tell me, you know, you have to give people permission to hurt your feelings. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. And so it might be like going, oh, if I do this, I'll disappoint them. It's like, so? It doesn't matter. I don't care what that person thinks of me. Yeah. So is like, that kind of like the what someone else thinks about me is none of my business, that kind of thought? Okay. Yeah. yeah, or we all have those people in our lives, like they may be our relatives or friends or someone that we find ourselves always trying to please them. Like always like, oh, if only that person liked me, approved of me, whatever, then I would be a good person. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, I don't have to give that person that much control right. over what I think of myself. Um, be like, yeah, like I don't need you to like me for me to like myself, which that took me a long time. I thought, you know, well, these people, if they don't like me, then I must be unlikable. Or so it's yeah. like, no. Who cares if they like me? Yeah. Like maybe they're yeah. a total asshole. Like maybe I'm better <laughs> off. Maybe it's a better sign of what kind of person I am that they don't like me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to give my, it's like, no, I don't have to care what they think. But yeah. there are still a handful of people, as I think there should be. Like, we should have people in our life that their opinions of us really matter. Sure. Um, and so some people, like if one of my kids <laughs> or a parent, if I really disappointed them, like, I would be crushed and devastated. But I don't give that control to very many people anymore, which I think was the weirdest thing of my first art show, <laughs> which is strange because standing back and watching people look at my art was That's the weirdest the thing ever mm -hmm. because it does feel vulnerable. And so I don't know. I made it a whole 45 minutes. 
you know, I walked around, looked at the other places, you know, pieces. I was fortunate there were several other artists in the show. Um, but, and then I found myself just kind of standing in the corner watching people look at my piece of art mm -hmm. and feeling like a creepy stalker. So I <laughs> kind of left. Um, it just felt so vulnerable. It does. And I was like, why do I care what these people think of that piece? Like, that piece is already sold. It really doesn't, but I really cared. And so if I'm going to have to work on that and deal with that because I know there's going to be other, mm -hmm. there'll be more art shows and there'll be more things and I'll need, I'm going to have to find a better way to cope with that because that was oh. the weirdest of realizing, oh, you know, and I do public speaking for a living and I go and I tell people, you know, very vulnerable personal stories about right. myself. But it was like, that feels less vulnerable than this. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And that so, yeah, sharing my art, yeah. like, that'll be an interesting thing. A new season in my life of getting yeah. ready to be an artist because <laughs> well, all of a sudden out, let me know, it gave all these people really permission. I, see, I, I can not internalize the criticism in a lot of areas. Like, you know, I do the public speaking. I talk about horrific things that have happened to me. And I'll, no problem. You know, I get horrible things said to me in my Twitter mentions. <laughs> no problem. But my art, it is so hard. Like, the first, I, rem I still remember the first uh, show and sale that we did. And these people talking about it. And they're asking me questions. And, I mean, they ended up buying, like, $400 worth of art. But... Man, that 20 minutes <laughs> listening to them critique it was hard. And they were being nice, and it still felt really vulnerable. Very vulnerable, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I don't play, know how you do it all the time on stage. I like, play it music, me. like, the, the songs I write are super raw. I mean, I have them described as, like, a, you know, bloody rare steak. Because, uh, I, I mean, I'm very... Oh, wow. Which is... I, I, mean, I it makes take sense. it as a compliment. The yeah, the metaphor makes sense, but yeah. wow, that's a visual. Yeah, because, I mean, I... I sing about super personal do. Uh, experiences and 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 not even just experiences about like really complex emotions and taking them into like just a just simple uh, heartfelt mm -hmm. expression right. that is a, a, an emotional experience that I think a lot of people can identify with and but it's very raw yeah mm -hmm. it's it's you know just scratch the surface and you'll bleed so. Uh. I heard someone else talk about writing a song as just being like open heart surgery. It is, yeah. <laughs> it was a night's nice word that would be so yeah. personal. And I mean, and being a singer songwriter by myself was so much harder. Now I have a full band and I feel like I can kind of hide yeah. a little bit and I have their, you know, them with me on stage. I feel like I have a team. But when it's just me by myself, I feel so vulnerable. And sometimes I still get really scared before I go play. But then it's really cathartic and, and feels really rewarding because you will spot someone. And for me, I don't know, it's probably different with visual arts, but like for me, if I can just find like the one person who I can tell they're identifying with me, mm -hmm. if it's just one person in the audience, then I'm like, okay, this is why I did this. You know, that makes it worth it. So I would think, you know, finding somebody who's critiquing, but also taking away exactly what you meant in a piece that you created has got to be, you know, a reminder of why you're doing it. Yeah, like I did, I got to do this really cool piece for this guy in California who he had seen something that I did for someone else mm -hmm. and messaged me on Instagram. I was like, hey, I really want your pieces. And we got talking about, you know, what he wanted. And what he ended up sending me was the coolest. And like, it was kind of ridiculous, but then I <laughs> loved it. And it was, you know, he's a musician. His name's Charlie Overby, and he's a musician. And he's, you know, been in the L.A. music scene for years and worked, you know, in his own bands, worked for other bands, um, doing a lot of stuff and knows everyone. And he had this really cool picture that it's like the screensaver on his phone of his little girl when she's like two years old in her little pink pajamas sitting on the shoulders of Lemmy from Motorhead backstage Aww, at a yeah. show. You know, it was like he was yes. working with them at the time and it, he was like, you know, it's surreal, like no one sees Lemmy with kids mm -hmm. you know yeah, and it's to just see Lemmy is God that's right you know. <laughs> Lemmy is the metal God and I was like yes I'll do it and so we did it you know I did it in um, a black and white kind of a gray scale um, and the beads were shimmery it was metal it was, beautiful. It was blingy you got to, yeah mm -hmm. to, I loved it it was big it was like seven and a half by nine inches I think it was like 18,000 beads. beads. Oh my God. And so I'd worked on it, but it was cool. And I was like, I'm going to drive this to you. Like it was in LA and I'd spent so much time working on it. 
And it's like, one, I wanted to be able to say that I took a road trip with Lemmy from Motorhead <laughs> to see a man about a hat. So me <laughs> and Lemmy, hat, because yeah. one thing that Charlie does is make these fabulous hats. Um, Lone Hawk hats, a lot of celebrities, a lot of rock stars wear his hats on stage as part of their signature look. And so one of part of the barter of this was me getting a hat. And so I was like, like couldn't you fly? I was like, yes, I could fly. But it doesn't seem as cool. I could also just drop this in the mail. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I want to. So I took a road trip with Lemmy to see a man about a hat. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to get so much there. fun following you with your videos and your posts on that. <laughs> it was, it was a great. lot of fun. Um, I was totally exhausted on the way back. But yeah, to get there and to see his face, you know, his daughter is 12 now. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful, precocious, just this really neat kid. And he had made arrangements with his ex-wife so she could be there. Um, they made me dinner at their home and unveiled it to both of them together. Mm -hmm. And to see how meaningful my work was for them mm -hmm. because like I've just sat alone by myself and he didn't want to see it till it was done. Mm -hmm. And so hoping that he would like it and they loved it, Aww. you know, and they all teared up and I've got some cute pictures, uh -huh. you know, that and it's, so That's it was amazing. so rewarding, but that that one piece at a time. And so typically the things I've done, I've been really fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, it is kind of weird how I fell into it because like I made three crappy hair breaths and then this cool picture of Sitting Bull. <laughs> and then since then I've been, everything, I've got a waiting list for I think four months. I can't do That's anything amazing. for other people. But yeah, it's been like I make something and it goes to their new home. And so to have it hanging on a wall at a gallery just for people to look at mm -hmm. has been so nerve-wracking. <laughs> it's very different. So, so do people usually order things, like they just find you on Instagram or what? Like how have people been finding you? Yeah, like they find me on Instagram or they find me, someone they know mm -hmm. like has something that I mm -hmm. made and they go, well, that's different. Mm -hmm. um, where did you get that? And so then they reach out to me. But yeah, so they find me on Instagram. I did set up a page for my beadwork, but I'm terrible at maintaining it. <laughs> but you can follow like, at Bead Art by Shelby. But I've had a couple people that it's a lot of fun when I get to share along the way. Mm -hmm. But I've had people they're like, hey, I don't want to see a picture of it till it's done. And so <laughs> I don't get to share it on there. So I just share it when it's done. Um, you need to do time lapse videos so we can see. I the do. Whole I did process. a few time lapse videos, and I'll mm. show you one before I leave um, of making Tabitha, where I took a picture every three rows, and it's one with like 103 rows to get it done. And I took a picture every three rows oh, wow. and then put it together so it makes like a little time lapse mm -hmm. video. It's still a little crude. I'm getting a little better at it. I tried to do one with Lemmy. And Katie, but I didn't take enough pictures along the way, so my time my time lapse video looks pretty choppy. But <laughs> with Tabitha, it looks a little better, and I'll keep getting better at doing that. But yeah, so I've got my bead page. So they find me there, or a lot of it is just a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your your pages? So Real either clearly. like at Shelby Row nine one two is my that's me personally. Everything on Instagram. So, on Instagram. Okay. So if you want to follow my indigenous foods um you want to follow other stuff i'm a suicide prevention zealot and public zealot. speaker <laughs> um, i'm a professional but like i do it in my free time too right. so i'm a suicide prevention zealot um so if you want to keep up with all the things i do in my indigenous you know shelby row 912 or bead art by shelby is on Instagram is just pictures of my beadwork because I thought, you know, some people don't want to see the pictures of my grits or the pictures of my <laughs> squash and pecans and maple syrup. Or me and her um, hanging out at the or tower. Or us hanging out at the tower <laughs> at concerts. Summer's been such a good sport and gone to the concerts. She the bands that she hated. People I've never heard of before. She goes that to last one, he was really good. I don't he know was who, really I can't good. Who he is, I liked really him great. even better. Langhorn Slim. I liked him even better after the concert because he was such a good entertainer. He's really good. He he really knows how to work a crowd. Yeah. So even if I hated his music, which his music was good, his lyrics are great. Um, but even if I hated his yeah. music, he still would have been entertaining. <laughs> now with music, I can usually if the lyrics are clever and meaningful, mm -hmm. like I can 
It doesn't matter what the music yes. sounds like. Mm-hmm. Like I love it if You're it's a lyricist. A lyric. I'm a yes. lyricist. It's I really the connect for me. with the lyrics. Mm-hmm. I can um, I can tolerate any style as long as there's substance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, and that's why I think the different, like, some of, like, the death, or they're screaming or something. It's like, if I can't understand what yep. you're saying. That's exactly right, yeah. I can't, yeah, because it's, have to be able to hear it's the poetry, mm-hmm. you know, such a music, and I, I've got to hear yeah. the lyrics. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's a great lyricist. Really was. That, yeah, I've dragged her to concerts <laughs> with me. We went to this one that had, like, every six-foot-tall white guy in the state of Oklahoma was there, and they all stood directly in front of us. We could see nothing. <laughs> they were not short women. Like, I'm, no, you're not. I'm 5'9", I'm five nine, and I've five never eight. been at a, con, at a concert where I was like, is there, like, a height requirement? Did you have to be at least 6'2"? They to were all like this person? Tall, yeah. They were huge. Like, I don't they were think, all so tall. I don't they know. were so tall. I don't know where they came from, but... All of the, yeah, all these super tall white dudes. Apparently, that is the demographic that like shaky graves. Apparently, is really tall white dudes. And they have beards. A lot of that. A lot of you would have had a great time. I would have been able to pick up a date. Yes, you would have had a wonderful time. It was hipster heaven. Um, Hipsters, lots of beards. The music was great. I mean, the one fortunate was he did put on a good show. You know, some musicians, you know, like in studio, when you have all the equipment to keep everything tuned, but to be a really good. Yeah, you know, where musician. you can, mm-hmm. you know, he had a piece of his equipment that stopped working, and he just sat down and like played acoustic till they fixed it. Like he mm-hmm. just did two songs, never missed a beat, didn't mm-hmm. didn't stop the show. <laughs> they were up there fixing the equipment, and was I back on. About that. So, yeah. yeah, he had. He was like, okay, well, and he just kept right on going. Um, so yeah, so he was a great entertainer, even if you couldn't see him, it well, sounded good, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I didn't, it was the weirdest concert, I felt like a little three-year-old kid at a family reunion, you know, it's like, I'm looking at shoulders and butts, like, I can't <laughs> see anything. Well, I haven't been to a concert yet at Tower, you guys will have to let me know when you go to one. I, yeah, yeah well, I go all the time. I'll shove those six two men out of the way. Or just ask one of them out Well, I noticed the next time I went to, they had a seating. They uh, brought, um, they had the middle section clear, but they had seating on both sides. And I think that may have been the reason was so that people could actually see <laughs> if they, so I think yeah. they remedied that problem, well, thankfully. Good. Good, good, but good. I really like that menu because yeah. it's, the way it's set up, I can block off my little space and not mm-hmm. have people too close to me. Yeah. yeah. So if my you anxiety like, is manageable. If you like live music, but you're an introvert and need like some personal space, the tower is great because yeah, mm-hmm. you've got, I think there's three levels. Yeah. I think. I don't mind anyway, there's anyway. a couple levels, <laughs> but each one has like a little area where it's like a little ledge where you can put your drink and mm-hmm. stuff in a little bar. And so if you get there early and you just claim your spot Mm -hmm. there and then you're guaranteed a good three feet of personal space in front of you like no matter how full it gets Mm -hmm. you've got some personal space and i like to go to movies there too because they've got the balcony and it's small cool and you can contact the podcast at broke broken podcast at gmail.com the broken broken podcast can be found on twitter at broke broken show on instagram and facebook at broke broken podcast